Ryan. What's going on, folks? This is Jacob, uh, TFNN. Tom, earlier today, around uh, 11, so you can check the archives after this show if you want to see his show from earlier. So let's take a look. Obviously, big news of the day, uh, crude oil going up. Now we're at $86.50 right now uh the saudis are going to keep that one million barrel um kind of restriction that they've imposed on themselves uh throughout the year that's one million barrels per day um it's a little bit difficult kind of outlook especially uh given we're trying to tame inflation over here and that was always one of the things that you know ran the greatest risk at least in my opinion looking at it would be uh would be fuel costs right and they were a large component of what was driving it earlier uh, in the year so I believe they also, um, I think Russia said as well, they're going to maintain lower output. Of course, they're sanctioned currently, so um, that doesn't affect us in the immediate, the way that the uh, Saudi cut does as well. The other OPEC producers are also uh, just struggling um, to produce what they were uh, required to. Of course, the tune has changed now with Saudi Arabia also uh, reducing that down as well. Uh, look at it, Disney Today. It's such a sad sight. You know, we're at a, well, at the beginning of the year here, well, we're trading at the highest, like 118 right now, 118.22, and we're down at 81. And they have just some woes going on. It'll be interesting to see how they can, like, bounce back from it. Obviously, streaming um, wasn't as good as everyone uh, kind of anticipated it would be. Um, they still hold, you know, obviously the kind of monopoly regarding parks, right? Uh, but they had flops in their movies. Uh, of course, Star Wars didn't pan out the way that they intended. These, these movies made a lot of money, but it didn't have this kind of like long-term staying power I think they were anticipating. They recently had to close down uh, one of the um, hotels they had in, in their Star Wars park. Um, it, was a it was very pricey, and of course, as things are getting just more expensive in general, it kind of made sense. And we're seeing some cost-cutting by them, um, and, and hopefully we can see like a decent restructuring after a certain point, and we can get back up out of this, you know, $80, $81 price level. Um, I know a lot of people bought in at much higher prices as well. So you'll probably have a long-term hold on Disney uh, for quite a while, especially if you bought, like, you know, above 90s. I mean, this was trading, let's go to the three-year, stuff like that. I mean, when was the last time this even traded at this level? I mean, we're going back five years right now. It's trading at 109, you know, 120. So, I mean, we're way, well below five-year levels here. Let's go to 15-year. I mean, that's pretty insane, right, around 2014 area. So they have a long way to go. Um, it might be like a dark age for them for a little bit. Um, I still believe they're a, they're a powerhouse, right? I mean, they might have some issues currently, um, but maybe this might be a wake-up call for them. Uh, again, a lot of their movies kind of flopped a little bit. Um, if they can really recapture um, some kind of culture there to make it better, I, I think, you know, in, in the long term, we'll see these guys come back. I mean, it's Disney, right? It's massive. So there's some issues along with ESPN as well um, regarding some kind of like, I suppose like uh, streaming, like the fundamentals on that, right? Um, the particulars on it. And ESPN was having some issues as well, transitioning into like direct to consumer. And they're still, um, you know, still working through that as well. That was going to be a big thing for Disney if they're able to get some kind of rights regarding that. Um, but then the outlook for ESPN kind of went down a little bit as well. Let's look at the... Look at the ES Mini here. The market today is kind of sideways, uh, lower. Obviously, the NQs are, you know, again, marginally up. Same with the Qs. Tesla's seeing a great day today, uh, really hovering around like a 5% up. Um, there is a lot of news about their Cybertruck coming out, so we'll see if uh, that lives up to the hype. Elon is saying uh, that you can actually drive it in water for some period of time, as long as it's not too, uh, too deep, which is a, which is a wild claim. Uh, Steel Dynamics, around that 105. Again, we just keep bouncing off this $100 area. This is consolidation. And then, you know, resisting this with low volume. Again, kind of a move to the downside. Factories uh, output in uh, America has also declined a little bit. Um, so that might be some kind of downward uh, effect on steel as well. The dollar obviously blew up today at 104.81. This depressed uh, gold a little bit. You can see the gold contract. Not too much, though. We're still at 1951. Uh, the Dow futures, again, we're just sideways to slightly down. 
I want to take a look, um, let's see here, at Walmart, because they've been knocking it out of the park this year, especially as, you know, we get this weird V-shape kind of thing going on, right? Uh, someone that I knew in a, one of my friend groups was asking, like, are we in a recession right now? And it's not, you know, we're not in a recession, okay? There's not, like, contraction over certain quarters. But um, I think there might be some kind of V-shape experience going on with uh, Americans, right? We saw maybe in May that uh, a shopping spree by people who are a little bit wealthier, um, that really helped prop up the economy a bit. Uh, people on the lower end, however, uh, they're definitely having to cut back a little bit of their spending, um, you know, so they might be experiencing some things relate, uh, that would maybe, I don't know, seem recessionary, right? Not as much spending. Walmart has really come in on that, particularly in their grocery section, right? We had high food prices in the beginning of this year, uh, there's been some kind of stabilization in that, but Walmart has been up 13% so far this entire year, uh, which is massive. You look at Target, which is a similar kind of competitor, um, they haven't been doing as well. And so really the, the big difference between these two uh, companies, and, and really for the purposes of what we're talking about, is Walmart's um, grocery section. They've been able to have very competitive prices uh, regarding their groceries, um, and then they've been able to convert uh, a lot of their people coming in to buy groceries into the rest of uh, rest of their product lines. They cut back on owning some of these, um, you know, clothing companies as well. Uh, some of their clothing brands, they sold those off, and uh, they're doing quite well. So on Thursday, uh, this was last Thursday, reached a record closing of 162.61 a share. We're back down just marginally from that right now. Um, the stock started in September near its all-time high. Obviously, it closed off 161.56. And this year, the company's shares are up more than 13%, and that's higher than the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Year-to-date gain of almost 5% and significantly outpaces Target. And Target, obviously, they got hit with a little bit of uh, some, you know, political scandal, I guess I could say. I don't know. Regardless, they were down pretty substantially, and year-to-date, they're down 16%. Um, Pretty fascinating. And again, the analysis from this is they're able to really get these people in for their grocery business and then convert them uh, pretty easily. They do a great job at that. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We have Basil on today. Um, and then we have some more interesting things to speak about. So stay tuned.